Hi everyone, hi mom. Welcome to episode 8 of Tips, Tricks and Tools. Sorry I've been away for so long. I honestly have not been creating anything at all. <laughs> I have not been in the mood. I was sick for quite a long time. And uh, once I finished my last book, I just couldn't seem to get my mojo going. I have started a new book and I'm not able to post it until December as it is another design team project. Uh, but... I thought I would do this episode for you. I've had a number of different requests for, you know, different things. So we'll talk about glue sticks first. I had mentioned, I believe in my last video, that I use the UHU glue stick. <clears throat> Excuse me. And someone was asking me which kind, and I didn't even realize that they came in a bunch of different... Um, formulations I guess. This is what I have. This is what I found at my local stationery store and some people were mentioning they can't get it anymore. Uh, they do have a website. It's uhu.com and I'm guessing you probably would be able to uh, order it from directly from the company. It's based in Germany. Um, well at least the glue sticks are made in Germany so I'm guessing that's where they'd come from. Uh, like I said, I don't know. Uh, there's nothing special about this one. It just says UHU stick. That's it. Uh, it's not colored. It's nothing. It's just, you know, your regular glue stick. I just find that it works really, really well. And that's about all I can tell you about the glue stick. So that was for Practically Art. She was uh, asking me about that. Okay, next, um, I bought this um, little die set. Isn't it cute? I was looking for a coffee pot or a teapot type of die. Somebody had gifted to me, you know, that uh, teapot. I'm just going to pull up my box because I still have one left. And I'll show you. Although this is the bigger version <clears throat> of it. So I don't even know what that measures. So from handle to tip, it's almost six inches wide uh, by almost shy of four inches. Well, no, just over four inches, four and an eighth. Um, that's the bigger version. The one I used, I believe, was smaller. Pretty sure it was smaller. Maybe not. Maybe that is the size. Anyway, I looked everywhere for this particular one. I really love it, and I couldn't find it. So I ended up getting this one, uh, and this one, I believe, is from, I think it's from Norway, I believe. I'm not 100% certain, but here's her website right at the top there. There's the name of the dies, just up here. And I went directly to the website, ordered it from there, and I want to say I paid approximately $20 Canadian. And that was with shipping included, so that's a good price for Canada, let me tell you. Uh, a die set like this here in Canada would probably run me about 30 bucks, so that's a pretty good price. Uh, okay, now the reason I'm showing you this is... I thought it would be something to mention uh, for people who have die cutting machines and use dies and this one is embossable. So I actually have some cut out in my little die box. They're in white, uh, you can't see them very well but I will show them up nice and close so you get the idea here. Okay, so nice and close and I know it will show if I do it nice and close. There. So it does emboss. Now, this size, which is this guy, um, that worked great. So all of the bigger pieces, these here, all went through great. And I was able to put down my embossing pad and run it through again and get my embossing. The little pieces, like these guys and the little this little lid, they were harder. They popped out. Well, if you've ever tried to put the paper back in and run it through again, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're better at it than I am, but my paper always shifts and I end up not being able to uh, emboss it, I've mess it up somehow. So the little pieces, what I do is 
<clears throat> put the paper back in and take it out of the machine. Lay it on my craft mat and I use my tool and I simply hand emboss. So it's just a little tip for you if you're struggling to emboss smaller pieces or things that have popped out. If they've popped out, I don't even try and put them back. I just hand emboss them. I find it works better for me and uh, and you have better results and less throwing out uh, less, you know, maybe words that aren't appropriate. <laughs> Okay, so talked about that. Next thing I want to talk about is uh, gel mediums. This is not a gel medium. <laughs> Everybody's going, that's not gel medium. I do know that. <laughs> the reason I'm talking about this first is because, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a difference between a gel medium and a decoupage or mod podge. And for all of my new uh, people who are just starting crafting. I've had a number of questions about things like this. This is a glue. That's what it is. Now it's formulated in such a way that it will, you know, dry clear. It will stick things down for you. Um, so you can, you know, use a paintbrush to put it on or you can use a sponge brush to put it on. Or I've used my finger if it's a small enough area. Um, so it definitely is a glue, but it does seal things as well. Uh, so that's the purpose of this. It will dry clear. Okay. Now with gel glosses, there are different, I don't have them all. I have a few. Um, so I thought I would share just a few and I have a couple different companies. So Liquitex and Golden are both available in Canada and the U.S. Um, I'm, and I believe in the U.K. as well. I think it's harder to find, but yes. And if you're having difficulty finding it in your area, Amazon.com does carry most of the gels. <clears throat> Sorry, as you guys know, I'm still struggling with this cough. Okay, so let's start with a soft gloss, which is the middle one here. So this one here... Basically, I'm going to uncover my notes over here so that I don't forget to tell you something. Now, Manisha was asking me what I use, uh, the product that I was using. She was talking about this one, so I will, I will mention this one again. But in general, um, what you're going to do is you're starting with a soft, there's a medium, and there's a heavy. What gel medium is, is the basis of acrylic paint. So this is the start of an acrylic paint. It's the same formulation, which is why artists use this and mix it with their acrylic paint. What it does for them is it extends the dry time for them so that they can um, do other techniques with their paint. I'm not an artist, a canvas artist, so I can't explain it really well. Um, but this is just some of the research that I did for you guys so that I could sort of explain a little bit better what they were intended for. So what they would do is they would add this. Now the soft gel is self-leveling, so there's not a lot of uh, texture to it. There's not a lot of height to this. Uh, so it would basically just kind of, it, and depending on whether they're using, this one's a gloss, um, so it would give a nice shine to their paint, okay? The next one is a medium, which I don't have, but again, it will give you light texture. And then there's a heavy. Now the heavy, it's kind of pasty. It's, it's quite thick, like it won't fall out. And an artist would add this to their acrylic paint, and then they would be able to use like a, a artist knife um, on their canvas, and they would get peaks and valleys or texture. Now, if we're using it as uh, mixed media artists, then you can use this in a stencil. When you take the stencil off, you got a nice height in your stencil and it will stay there. Whereas if you did the same thing with the soft gel, it would eventually smooth out. So it, it, would, it would go lower than what you had intended. So there's the difference between uh, the soft, the medium, and the heavy, depending on the look that you want. You can add anything you want to these. You can add, um, <clears throat> sorry, mica chips. You can add uh, those colored flakes. 
I don't know what they're called, but uh, you can add um, you can add the uh, what is it called? This stuff. Um, I don't know what you call that stuff, but it shimmery. It's it's bigger than like a the sparkle. You can add these. Uh, these are little micro beads. You can add those to them because it will adhere, dry clear, and stay on your page. Now, depending, what I've read is that if the higher the gloss, the more transparent the finish is. So if you're using like a matte finish, you might find it slightly uh, duller than if you used a high gloss, you know, medium. Let's see, did I touch all the bases? Um, I think I did. So you can also buy them already done up if you don't happen to have things that you want to add. Uh, this is the only one that I have. Well, I actually, I have another one. It has sand in it. I mean, you, you can do, <laughs> do those things yourself. Uh, I'm lazy. So I bought it like this. This has mica chips. When you buy things like this, it will dry clear and then just leave your chip color sparkle behind. Same with the, uh, the sand. You get a neat texture to it. Um, you can color them. You can add acrylic paint to them. You can add um, your Lindy's mica powders, uh, your, what is the other one called? Uh, well, you know what I mean. There's all kinds of micro powders out there and I don't know all the names to them, but they all do basically the same thing. <clears throat> so if you're wanting to color after, it will accept color uh, just not as well as if you mixed it in with the gel. So if you're kind of wanting a translucent look, uh, instead of just like a clear kind of shiny, um, you know, like when you buy paper pads and they've stamped an image over it that they've just done clear um, embossing on it, that will be, this will be the look from here. That's what you will get with that. Um, but if you don't want that, yes, you can you can color them. Uh, I found that it was a little harder to color them. Um, and if there's anybody out there who has any other ideas to use with your uh, gels, you know, please say so. The last one I want to talk about is this one. Now, this is kind of... I'm not thrilled with the name of it. It's called a gloss medium and varnish now people I think of varnish as stuff that you put over furniture I believe the varnish refers to the result that you get the look that you get it's not actually varnish that's in here uh, it, it again it's a medium it's a gel medium so again you can add mate to it um, add it to paint or whatever this one is meant to enhance the color of the paint so each kind of gel that you purchase does a different thing. It has some some other property in it um, that changes whatever the artist wants it to do. And like I said before, I'm not an artist, so I don't I don't know all the uses that they would use them for. I know what I use them for. So this one here, I really love this one because when I printing something, you know, like a digital kit, and I want the color to be a little more enhanced, I'll put this over it and it will pop the color off the page. It will, it will brighten it. So an artist adds this to their paint and it in intensifies the pigment of the paint. That's what this one will do, okay? So it's just a little bit of research for each individual to find the company they prefer, uh, the gel they prefer, like I have this one, and it's just a cheap gel. Now this is called a medium gloss gel, but it's really liquid, you know, compared to Golden or Liquitex. Those two companies I find have the best quality for me personally. I'm not saying it's the best out there. I'm saying for me personally, I like these the best. Um, this one I just strictly use as a glue. That's pretty much what I use it for, just to use it up. And that's about it. I think I think that's all. I did buy this one. And actually, if anybody knows about this one, I haven't used it yet. <laughs> uh, 
So this one is a medium acrylic medium. So again, it's a gel medium. I've never it is quite liquid though. I've never used it. And uh, if anybody has, let me know what they think. It's uh, Luminart, I think. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Luminart. I just bought it. Now, on the bottle, it says um, <clears throat> it is specially formulated to, that's a, what is it? It's water soluble. It's ready to mix with polished pigments, glitter, mica pigments. So that's what all of these will do. You can add all of those things. And it will extend acrylic based paints. So that's exactly what I said about those. It does the same thing. But it for solution number two, <clears throat> the medium is an acrylic medium that has the medium feel needed for paper, plastic, paper mache, paper clay, sponging on walls, and some surfaces may require a spray fixative. So this I bought because it specifically mentioned paper and I thought I would give it a whirl and see um, how well it worked. So I guess I'll have to try it and let you guys know. Um, but it you know gives solutions right on there, mixing um, amounts to try different techniques. So I thought I would give that a whirl. But again, that's what these are for. They're made from the acrylic polymer that they make acrylic paints from and that's what they do they add it together and there you go Bob's your uncle <laughs> okay that's all I have to share today uh, if I've missed something that I told somebody I would mention please let me know um, my memory's not the best and sometimes I have great intentions and then I don't follow through so uh, please let me know leave a comment and uh, Thank you so much, all you guys, for um, you know watching, for subscribing, for leaving comments and giving me the thumbs up. And also, as um, a closing note, I'm going to congratulate Gina from Las Vegas, who won one of my journals, uh, to mark my 6,000 subscribers. Thank you again. Um, and like I said before, random draws will be happening. I won't do any more the rest of this year. It will be into the new year now. And hopefully my dollar, the Canadian dollar, will rise. Uh, it's really, really bad right now, so it's very expensive for me to mail. Um, that's all I've got today. So I hope everybody's doing well, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.